Hey guys, this is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my high yield anatomy review series for the USMLE Step 1, NBME CBSE, and NBME CAS examinations. In this series, I will be covering a broad overview of the discipline of anatomy across various organ blocks for these examinations. This will be part 55 of my multi-part video series of doing so. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started on today's content. Let's start off by taking a look at the gag reflex. Stimulation of the posterior part of the pharynx elicits a reflexive muscular contraction known as the gag reflex. The afferent limb of this reflex is mediated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9. Its efferent limb is governed by the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. Damage to the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, can lead to an absent or diminished gag reflex. Let's next take a look at tonsillitis. During palatine tonsillectomy, the peritonsillar space aids in tonsil removal, unless adhesion to the superior constrictor occurs. Injury to the glossopharyngeal nerve can result in loss of taste and general sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue. Hemorrhage during tonsillectomy typically stems from the tonsillar branch of the facial artery. Penetrating the superior constrictor may lead to injury to the high facial artery or tortuous internal carotid artery. Let's next take a look at palatine tonsils. The main blood supply to the palatine tonsils originates from the tonsillar branch of the facial artery. Lymphatic drainage primarily occurs to the jugulodigastric lymph node, which is frequently enlarged in the body. Nerve supply to the palatine tonsils is via the tonsillar plexus, formed by branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, and the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. All right, guys, now that we have covered all of the content, let's go ahead and take a look at some questions to review the knowledge you have gained so far. During a routine medical examination, a physician stimulates the posterior part of the patient's pharynx, observing a lack of gag reflex. Which of the following nerves is primarily responsible for mediating the afferent limb of the gag reflex? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is C, glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine. The gag reflex is elicited by stimulation of the posterior pharynx with the afferent limb mediated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine. This nerve relays sensory information from the pharynx to the brainstem initiating the reflexive contraction of pharyngeal muscles. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. A, the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, primarily innervates the face and is not involved in the gag reflex. B, the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, is responsible for facial expressions and taste sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue, but not the gag reflex. D, the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, is the efferent limb of the gag reflex, controlling the motor response, not the afferent limb. E, the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, innervates the muscles of the tongue and is not associated with the gag reflex. All right, now that we have covered this question, let's move on to look at the next question. A 28-year-old patient presents with severe sore throat, difficulty swallowing, and fever. On examination, the patient's tonsils appear enlarged and inflamed. During a tonsillectomy procedure, the surgeon notices bleeding from the tonsillar area. Which of the following vessels is most likely responsible for this bleeding? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. 
otherwise moving on now? The correct answer is E, tonsillar branch of the facial artery. During tonsillectomy, bleeding typically arises from the tonsillar branch of the facial artery, which supplies blood to the tonsils. Injury to this vessel during surgery can result in hemorrhage from the tonsillar area. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. A, the lingual artery supplies blood to the tongue and floor of the mouth, but it is not directly associated with tonsil bleeding. B, the facial artery does not directly supply blood to the tonsils, its tonsillar branch does. C, the external carotid artery gives rise to numerous branches, including the lingual and facial arteries, but is not directly responsible for tonsil bleeding. D, the maxillary artery is a branch of the external carotid artery and does not supply blood to the tonsils. All right, now that we have covered this question, let's move on to look at the next question. A 35-year-old patient presents with recurrent sore throat and difficulty swallowing. Examination reveals enlarged and inflamed palatine tonsils. Which of the following statements regarding the palatine tonsils is accurate? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is B, lymphatic drainage primarily occurs to the jugulodigastric lymph node, which is the body's most frequently enlarged lymph node. The palatine tonsils primarily drain into the jugulodigastric lymph node located in the neck. This lymph node is frequently enlarged in response to tonsillar infections or inflammation. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. A, the main blood supply to the palatine tonsils is from the tonsillar branch of the facial artery, not the lingual artery. C, taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue is mediated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, not by the nerve supply to the palatine tonsils. D. Injury to the glossopharyngeal nerve does not result in loss of taste or general sensation from the tonsils. It primarily affects taste and sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue. E. The palatine tonsils are innervated by the tonsillar plexus of nerves, which includes branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, and the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, not solely by branches of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. Um, all right, guys, that is all I have for the video today. As always, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this if they are beneficial to you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to type them up in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, this is Fixer Med signing off. Be sure to have a great day, everyone. Good luck studying as always, and goodbye.